Hello audience, uh, today I just wanted to make a video on the uh, rake and this is the P841-L. Now um, I got this knife for um, winning a giveaway which was really cool from rake and phoenix. I also got a phoenix flashlight that I will feature soon on the channel and I know it's been a while since I made a video but that's because I've been getting into other hobbies, things like watches and um, well, watches pretty much. Anyway, um, just wanted to quick point out some things about this knife um, in contrast to my Effingro. And this is the, oops, uh-oh, doesn't say. I think it's the EF223. If I'm mistaken, then I will correct it in the title. Anyway, I just wanted to point out some things. When I got this knife, I thought it was absolutely incredible, and I still do. I think it's a great knife for the price. Can't go wrong with it. I ended up comparing this knife in my review to the Spyderco Tenacious. And my main talking point was the fact that this is a $20 knife, Tenacious is a $50 knife, and do you get $30 worth of difference? Well, it was hard to answer, and in the end, I left it up to the viewer. However, in today's video, I wanted to take a look at the rake and compare this to the F and Grow. I would compare it to the Tenacious, but I no longer have that knife as I have given it away. But this knife has impressed me immensely. It is an incredible knife. It is so, so incredible. It is, I can't, I just, I can't stop raving about this, this knife. And it's not the first rake I own. In fact, I have no, I have had another one um, that I made a review for, which I'll go ahead and post since um, I no longer have that knife either. I ended up trading it, but I'll go ahead and post it anyway, probably after this review. What I love about this knife is, and in fact, this was a knife I considered buying for many months. I ended up not doing it because it, it just I would have had too many knives, but. I'm so glad I have this now. The quality in this particular blade is outstanding. The grind is so even. The grind on the top is so even. The thumb studs are even. Like these are things that you think, well, yeah, they're even, duh, stupid. But these are things that so many companies get wrong. Everything about this knife is super smooth. It feels like a knife that should be worth a hundred bucks or something. But I think when I was thinking of purchasing this knife, it was around $46, if I'm not mistaken. $46 on Blade HQ. That must be a little higher now, I'm thinking. Well, anyway, let me just go over um, some of the features on this knife, which I think make it... Definitely worth the money. Definitely something that I would buy over a Tenacious. And a reason to actually skip a knife like the F and Grow. Even though it's an incredible value, I think you truly get your money's worth on a knife like the Rake. So, for starters, the bottom. If we look at the bottom of the knives, we see that it has a pocket clip that actually matches the design. This is not an afterthought. Even the lanyard hole is touching, or at least, excuse me, extremely close to the screws. And it actually indents, the G10 indents inside so that, you know, it's just a good fit. And you get a good grip when you pull it out, which I really like. That's why I don't, I, this is why I prefer uh, pocket clips to leave room for me to pull the knife out instead of a deep carry. So, that's one thing I appreciated about this. However, you can see that the clip is just kind of random. It's it's a clip that they probably had laying around. Maybe they put a little bit of thought into it, but it doesn't match the design. I always thought it was a weird clip, but since I'm a function over fashion kind of guy, I just kind of didn't care about it. But when we look here, we see that the lanyard hole is right there in line, but the screws stick out a little bit. And these are really cool screws. It's kind of cool that they stick out. 
but it goes to show that they didn't really put a lot of time into it. Of course, this is a $20 knife, but the point I'm trying to make is that just spending a little bit more, you get a lot more. Another thing is the quality of the G10. So if we look here, the G10, oh, by the way, these screws are very inside and they don't bother you at all. The G10 is really, really grippy, very grippy, going this way and even going this way. Plus, there's the layers of G10, which this is a, a design aspect that you don't see on a lot of knives at all. The, the actual true layering of the G10 gives it a ton of grip, like this way. So much grip, in fact, that it doesn't even need the jimping here. You get the full grip in the palm of your hand, which is awesome. This knife, it does have um, grippy G10 when it's wet. Right now that it's dry, it's just a little bit um, plasticky. Also, it really, really needs jimping. That's one thing I said um, in my review. It really needs jimping. It's comfortable in the hand-ish. I'm feeling a little bit less um, contact here with these two fingers. But, you know, it's decent. You're going to cut. You're going you're gonna to be okay. I mean, for probably a short period of time. You can cut with this all day and you would be just fine. Another thing is that you have this lock on the knife. This actually prevents the liner lock from uh, closing in. So... It just gives you an extra sense of security. If you're going to keep that blade open for longer, you're going to want to engage that. And, as I said before, this little liner lock here on the F and Grow is very nice. Very nice little liner lock. It's got that indent right there, which is so easy for companies to do, but they just don't do it. Here, though, you get that with grip, and it is incredible. It's so nice. And the opening the opening it's effortless effortless opening never have i had a knife that opens this this effortlessly now this f and grow is still the fastest deploying knife i own that is non-assisted but this is oh my gosh it's effortless it's incredible how smooth this is when i thought that my ontario um insert name here because i forgot was smooth i was wrong this is way better also that 14 c20 and steel cuts like a champ it honestly lasted just as long as this d2 and i probably cut more things with it but with this knife you're gonna get an even grind and i think we all know what grinds are so i don't have to explain basically just the way that the knife is sharpened the cuts in the steel here and the main cut here this flat ground F and grow is not very even. I actually, um, I'm still working on it, but because it's D2, I'm just letting it go with the time, working it out as I sharpen the knife. So that's one thing to consider. And basically, this just has, um, I think it has stronger liners. Now, there is some weight reduction in this liner here, as you can see. So you can see there and a teeny little bit of weight reduction on this liner so you are getting some cuts but it's a heftier design obviously we've seen this knife before how great it is in the um, weight reduction it is really fantastic see that there really great so it's a very lightweight knife but this is just a substantial feel better handle design better um, scale design very solid knife truly truly a marvel and one that i think should be compared to knives much higher in the price let me just bring in another knife here real quick all right now this good audience is the spyderco manix 2 now this knife is more than double the price of the rake but it still is missing some i don't know just some some things basic basic design aspects of this knife i know that this knife was in production for like over two years all focusing on the design you know everyone says it's the best cutting tool there is out there well honestly i don't think that i would choose the manix 2 over the rake it'd be pretty cool if the rake was 
a little bit serrated. They do not offer a serrated version, but I definitely cannot stop carrying this knife. And um, I'm not in any way like have been asked to do this. This was a knife I just happened to win in a giveaway. Um, yeah, probably the best knife I have ever used. Uh, and I haven't used, you know, like Sabenzas or anything like that. But I have used some high-end spider codes like this. I mean, this is just the basic, the basic Manix 2. Um, I've used other knives like it in its price range, but nothing like this. So definitely got to get this video out there um, so people can be aware of what's going on here at Rake. This is, this is really great. Really, really great. All right. Thanks for watching. Have any questions, leave them in the comments or um, if you check out my Instagram and there's a, something, a video you want to see on a certain knife or whatever I show on there, you know, let me know. Thanks for watching.